Hi everyone, Grant K here for the Flame Premium Learning Channel. In the previous video, we went through the project and user settings when starting up the Flame products. I mentioned that each project starts off with one environment known as the workspace. Within that workspace, you will find your desktop and library for the specific project you are working on. But the question that comes up often is why do we need the extra levels of project management within the same project? Well, if you're someone who is working on a project using one flame, you can almost ignore the concept of the workspace as it won't make much of a difference to you. However, when you progress into the world of collaborative workflows between flame products, one option available is to have all systems access a single project on a main flame workstation. Now, each system that accesses that project will require its own workspace. As an example, you have a Flame, Luster, Flare and Flame Assist working on the same project. Each system will have its own workspace associated to the project. This allows all the systems to work simultaneously on a single project, as well as focus on their portion of the workflow. So while Flame Assist could be conforming and versioning, Flame could be investing in finishing tasks and Flare is being used as the creative assistant to Flame. It is also possible to share the work between workspaces using the shared libraries. This is something I'll cover in a later video. So if a project does have multiple workspaces, you can log into the different workspaces from either the project startup screen or the project and user settings within the application. I mentioned this in an earlier video, but you can also manage the workspaces within the affected project. Using the Media Hub, you would go to the Projects tab. When you expand any project, you reveal all its workspaces. You can rename a workspace or delete a workspace. But please delete workspaces with caution. Ensure that valuable work has been moved into another workspace or archived before deletion. Hopefully, this has given you some high-level understanding behind the workspace. Now, let's look at the workspace in the Media Panel. At the top of the Media Panel, you can identify the workspace by its name. You can also click on the workspace and rename it for organizational purposes. Looking into the structure of the workspace, you have three main sections – the Desktop, the Libraries and the Shared Libraries. To ensure that you can distinguish each section in the workspace, colour coding can be applied to each section. Using the contextual menu, you have a variety of colours you can assign to define the look of each component. Now let's start off discussing the desktop. For artists using very old versions of Flame Premium and Smoke Advanced, the term desktop would normally refer to a view. For Flame artists, this would have been known as the Reels view. In Flame Premium 2016, when talking about the active desktop, you are referring to the entire creative environment that is currently your work in progress. So the desktop environment is an entity or container that contains batch groups, iterations, Reels groups, source clips and sequence clips. Everything that is the essence of your production. Now, the desktop and its various workflows have been under development for the past few versions of the software. For Flame Premium 2016, the desktop now offers a timeline-centric workflow and a batch-centric workflow that are complementary and interchangeable. Each workflow has different advantages in terms of how you work, but ultimately, the workflows bring batch, timeline and reels together. This should become very clear as you go through each workflow. The benefit of working within the desktop is that as you continue to build your project, the desktop will grow and expand to accommodate the work. This includes the ability to have your sequences as well as multiple batch flow graphs in a single desktop. Whether you choose to keep all your batches in one desktop or one batch per desktop, please remember that the desktop is a complete environment with all your current work. To save all your work, you save the desktop. So the desktop is saved into the second section of the workspace that is known as the libraries. 
The Libraries is where you save all your work when you are not using it in the current desktop. You can save as many desktops into the Libraries as you want and these are complete saves of your work. But the Libraries can also store other elements that you might not need in the current desktop. For instance, you could store extra media for a project, previous versions, offline continuity checks, graphic elements and the list goes on. Ultimately, the Libraries are all about storing your work and media management. There will be detailed videos covering the Libraries later in the series. Now in terms of the workspace structure, certain functionality has been implemented in the media panel to help you comfortably work between the desktop and Libraries. The idea is that you know exactly where you are and you can confidently manage the relationship between the desktop and the Libraries. Looking at the very top of the media panel, you will find a few tabs. You can switch between them in the interface. The first tab is All. This view of the media panel shows you the entire workspace structure including the project name. This is a fully functioning view. However, with a massive structure, this view could easily cause confusion if you want to focus solely on work in progress or media management. So the next few tabs work as visual filters to focus specifically on certain sections in the workspace. You use the Desktop tab to isolate all elements present in the current desktop and the Libraries are hidden. So you have a batch group that contains the batch setup and any related schematic and shelf reels and the batch iterations if displayed. You also have any real groups that contain sequences or media that are available in the currently active desktop. It's a fast way to access just the desktop components in all core creative areas. This gives you better clarity with your current work without having to worry about being distracted or accidentally disturbing any saved work in the Libraries. This is in contrast to the Libraries tab where you have the Libraries and Shared Libraries visible and your current desktop is hidden. So now you can clearly focus on media management tasks without disturbing any work in progress on the desktop. I would just like to say that you could still drag and copy from the desktop to the library and vice versa. The fourth tab is the Batch tab. This view only shows the contents of the currently active batch group. This is extremely handy if you have multiple batch groups in the desktop but you are focusing on one specific flow graph. These four tabs are persistent in all views. However, contextual tabs will appear depending on what view you are working in. For example, going into the Conform view, the Batch tab will change into the Conform tab which will only show Conform sources as you rebuild a sequence. The same applies when working in Batch effects. You will get a contextual tab to focus on the schematic reels and sources you are using in your batch effects composites. Please remember that if you work in the desktop section of the workspace, it is not saved until you save the desktop into the libraries. So in summary, the design of the workspace plays a major fundamental part when considering the workflows in Flame Premium. And using the workspace in conjunction with the media panel, you have a scalable solution that allows you to focus on the tasks depending on what you need to do in the application. So in the next video, we start looking at the first workflow in the desktop that is known as the batch-centric workflow. This is when you build batch composites that are separate from the sequence. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Premium Learning Channel for future videos.